Well, we're calling it the Roman Gym, and uh, it's uh, a part of the Roman bars that people haven't been able to visit previously. Uh, it's been behind the scenes, uh, but uh, uh, and it's tucked away in vaults uh, beneath York Street and Swallow Street nearby. Um, but it's accessible from within the Roman baths, and uh, it's an opportunity for us to uh, be able to bring in a new part of the site that uh, people have never been able to see before. How would the Romans have used this particular area? Well, we think that uh, the, uh, certainly for most of its life, uh, most of its working life, this probably functioned as a kind of exercise area or as we might say in modern parlance, a gym uh, that uh, would probably resonate with people most for the kind of things that went on here. A place where people would do exercises, uh, perhaps after you've just arrived at the bath you might do a few workouts uh, and things like that before you then go off and uh, do what everyone expects to hear about people doing in Roman baths, which is to go through a series of heated rooms, plunge pools and so on. But uh, uh, most bathhouses of substantial size had some sort of facility for exercise and uh, exercise was actually uh, an important part of uh, Romans thinking about uh, what made for good health and good practice. Um, you have modern day projections. I, I was thinking if you're a trained archaeologist you could look around and see how it might have been much more difficult for people today to imagine how the space would be used. And we have a projection behind you now showing women. And let's make that point, if that point can yes. be made, that this is an area that was used by men and women. We believe so, yes. But uh, what you do see uh, as you look around uh, this space and uh, the immersive projections is you will sometimes see that you're surrounded by women and then on other occasions you'll see that you're entirely surrounded by men. What you'll never see is that you're surrounded by both men and women and we've pursued uh, an interpretation that uh, is based on gender separation. Right. We believe this was the case in this Roman bathhouse. It didn't happen everywhere, but in this bathhouse in Bath, uh, it does seem that there are duplicate facilities that, uh, of um, uh, the kind of changing rooms, the kind of heated rooms. There are two of almost everything. And uh, so we think it's because they had men in one area and women in the other. Now, this area was known to you. But does this perhaps point to the fact that the, the Roman Bars complex is even bigger than the area we know now? Uh, oh yes, it is. And uh, there have been uh, occasional sightings in uh, nearby vaults of uh, parts of structures that uh, belong to the bathhouse, but are outside the modern footprint that you can walk around on the ground in Bath. So if you're standing in the Abbey churchyard, you might think the Roman bars is underneath the pump room next to you. But actually, it's also underneath your feet. <laughs> um, and, uh, We're so never going to see a day when the whole site can be excavated. Huh? Um, well, probably not, uh, probably not while I'm working here, anyway. <laughs> Do you know, I, I was taking my normal coffee in Rosario's this morning, and I told a lady I was talking to while I was coming, and I also mentioned the fact that you were using uh, projection here yeah. and she made the point where where do these people come from that you feel to use here because okay. she would quite like to have a go herself okay well uh, the the people you see in the projections uh, are of course Romans but uh, <laughs> the uh, uh, the people acting in those roles uh, are not athletes uh, they're actually members of a local theatrical company, the Natural Theatre Company, ah. who provide costume interpretation at the Roman baths. And uh, so if you come here as a visitor, uh, on any day, you actually meet these real actors uh, dressed as Romans, but talking to you as if they are Roman. People who know yes. what they're doing. Yes, they talk to, they're talking to you about the activities they're taking part in. Uh, they, they might be talking to you about the roof they're mending or um, something practical like that or it might be 
you might be encountering one of them in the role of a visitor to the baths, uh, who's perhaps come with a personal slave um, <laughs> to uh, you know, look after their equipment whilst they're bathing. Stephen, it's splendid stuff, and you must be very pleased that this area of the baths will be open to the public. Of course, this was all part of the Archway project, and yeah. I've got to ask you before I go, yeah. what's the latest news on the World Heritage Centre? When might that be opening? Well, we're expecting it to open in November, so we're nearly there now. Um, we haven't fixed the formal date yet, but that will be done in the next few days. Um, and uh, uh, there are just one or two things um, left in terms of the fitting out to complete. And uh, the same applies, of course, to the Claw Learning Centre, uh, which is also part of the Archway project. Um, so there are three big strands to that project. One is this gym, another is the Learning Centre, and then, of course, there's the World Heritage Centre. Well, uh, I certainly hope with fingers crossed that you end your year with all your staff in celebrating the complete opening of that project. Thank you yeah. very much. Yes, thank you.